Hello. Um, in this video, I'm going to explore the symbolism of the death of Curly's wife. And I've chosen here a picture from Vogue. I think it's uh, Katie Parry. But she's arranged in a way that is reminiscent of the death of Curly's wife. And I've chosen it because most students I teach associate Curly's wife with the colour red. And they assume she's wearing a red dress. But actually, this is far from the case. Um, the redness is mentioned in the rouge on her cheeks, her red lipstick and her red nail polish. Um, and the reason I'm pointing this out is that you shouldn't overdo the sexual imagery that this red dress implies. Uh, Curly's wife is not really um, a sexual being in this description of her death. One of the main reasons for that is that Lenny has no sexual instinct yet. If you imagine he has the mind of a four or five year old, um, he's not developed a sense of sexuality and sexual desire. And Steinbeck is really careful in this description to completely underplay Curly's wife's sexuality because that will make us sympathize with her much more and it will make us very critical of this disparagement that she faces about being called a tart by um, not just Candy, but also George. Okay, well, let's leap straight into the text. Her eyes were wild with terror. So automatically he wants us to feel sympathy for her. She is powerless and Lenny is the most powerful man on the farm. He shook her then and he was angry with her. Don't you go yelling, he said, and he shook her. And the repetition of shook shows us how casual an act it is to Lenny, but also how destructive it is for her, because he doesn't know his own strength. Her body flopped like a fish. And the alliteration on F and uh, on the F in flopped and fish is called a fricative. And the purpose of this fricative is it mimics the swear word. Um, that swear word, beginning with the F, causes you to bear, you, bear your teeth. If you just pronounce the F, you'll see how your teeth are bared. Um, that is, if you like, our most animal instinct. You look at an animal that's um, ready to fight or flight, and it bears its teeth in this way. And I don't think it's any coincidence that one of the worst swear words in the English language uh, begins with this F because it is a violent challenge. Well, there's something else that we can say about this. Uh, the fish is a deliberate symbolism here. Uh, fish, of course, doesn't just give us the movement of her body in his huge hands. It's also symbolic of the early Christians. And it's uh, another reminder that what Lenny does goes against God. Now, if you want to interpret this as a religious novel, then you're going to show how the tragedy is caused by mankind turning against God. And if you want to show that it's an anti-Christian novel, you will show how ridiculous this um, symbolism is. Um, there is no God. And how do we know? Well, because these tragic events keep happening and there's nothing Curly's wife can do to stop it. And therefore, the idea of free will that um, is part of Christian faith is an illusion. Curly's wife doesn't have this free will. She just gets killed. So you pick your interpretation and make it fit the novel. And then she was still for Lenny had broken her neck. Um, this matter-of-fact way of describing her death is deliberately emotionless, without passion. Um, part of it suggests that Lenny's killing of her was done without emotion. In other words, not with the intention of killing her. But it's also dispassionate, like fate is dispassionate. People live or they die, and it seems like random chance. There isn't a purpose behind it. Uh, again, if you look at it that way, it's an anti-Christian message. Or if you see it as um, a Christian novel, then God is dispassionate about it. 
he allows it to happen and doesn't intervene. Uh, right, he looked down at her and carefully he removed his hand from over her mouth and she lay still. So this is ironic. He's being careful with her only once she's already dead. I don't want to hurt you, he said. Again, very ironic because he assumes that she's still alive. This is still in the present tense, not I didn't want to hurt you. In fact, he doesn't realise that she has been hurt because, of course, he doesn't understand his own strength or the consequences of his actions. But George will be mad if you yell. When she didn't answer nor move, he bent closely over her. He lifted her arm and let it drop. This is a bit like a child with a toy. Um, we can see his lack of understanding. And then this language here, let it drop, reminds us of the fall. Uh, Lenny himself has fallen here. Uh, spiritually, morally, he's committed a murder. And this is as far as you can possibly fall um, in Christianity, but also in terms of the law. For a moment, he seemed bewildered. And then he whispered in fright, I'd done a bad thing. I'd done another bad thing. Now, here we get a real insight into Lenny's tragedy. He understands that some things are wrong, but he has no scale. He can't understand how the killing of a mouse is any different from the killing of Curly's wife. And it's very likely that he just doesn't understand what death is. Um, why does Steinbeck do this? Well, it increases our sympathy for Lenny. It also increases the sense of tragedy that um, he's going to be killed without understanding what death is. Uh, he poured up the hay until it partly covered her. Here, this one sentence paragraph um, deliberately emphasises how Lenny is like an animal. Perhaps Steinbeck is suggesting that ultimately we are all like animals. Lenny, after all, is the most innocent character in the novel. He has no cruelty in him. And Steinbeck might be suggesting that even the most innocent of us are still bound to commit murder or bound to commit sin because we are all prey to our animal instincts. Uh, from outside, the bar from outside the barn came a cry of men and the double clang of shoes on metal. Uh, this clang of horseshoes is a repeated motif in the novel. The horseshoes themselves um, indicate luck, but they're constantly linked to the word clang as though um, luck is not good luck, it's ill fortune. Chance is working against them. In other words, it's another metaphor for fate. And for the first time, Lenny became conscious of the outside. He crouched down in the hay and listened. I'd done a real bad thing. Again, this is ironic. It appears from the word real that Lenny finally understands what he's done. But then when we read on, I shouldn't have did that. George will be mad. And he said, hide in the brush till he come. He's going to be mad in the brush till he come. That's what he said. Lenny went back and looked at the dead girl. Uh, the puppy lay close to her. Lenny picked it up. I'll throw him away, he said. It's bad enough like it is. In other words, to Lenny, it looks like killing the puppy is worse than killing Curly's wife. And that's why he throws the puppy away. Of course, he'd be much better off leaving the puppy and taking Curly's wife away if he wants to hide one of the killings. But he completely misunderstands the severity of what he's done. And again, Steinbeck could be encouraging us to sympathise with Lenny. But also, perhaps he's showing how to fate one death is much like another. There isn't a compassionate fate looking after us or a compassionate God. We're all equally disposable. Uh, again, Steinbeck wants to create sympathy, but this time for Curly's wife. He reminds us that she's not even a woman. She's just a girl, um, too young to be accused um, of all the evil that the men accuse her on the ranch. He put the pup under his coat and he crept to the barn wall and peered out between the cracks towards the horseshoe game. 
again that metaphor for fate and bad luck. And then he crept round the end of the last manger and disappeared. Here again we've got that Christian language where Steinbeck is suggesting a parallel between the manger that Jesus was born in and the manger where Curly's wife has died in. So you can see this as a ridiculing of Christianity, deliberately mocking its symbols in order to show that there is no God, or you can look at it as a Christian motif to show how far men have turned away from Christianity in the Great Depression and started to turn on each other um, rather than support each other as the uh, Christian message would have it. So you decide which way you want to interpret the Christian imagery here. The sun streaks were high on the wall by now and the light was growing soft in the barn. And this could be a metaphor for heavenly acceptance of Curly's wife. Uh, the idea that um, the light is growing soft shows perhaps um, heaven or God um, forgiving Curly's wife for her cruelty in life and accepting her into heaven. Uh, Curly's wife lay on her back and she was half covered with hay. It was very quiet in the barn and the quiet of the afternoon was on the ranch. Um, this idea of um, the afternoon being on the ranch is a deliberate echo of biblical language again. So here we have the King James version of Genesis and you can see this idea of being on is uh, rooted in the King James Bible. The darkness was upon the face of the deep and um, then what links us more closely to the afternoon and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so. So you can see this idea of the afternoon being on the ranch is the kind of language we would never use um, but it is rooted in this biblical language because Steinbeck has a biblical message here. Again you're deciding whether it is to ridicule this idea of a benevolent God, an all-forgiving God, or whether he's offering hope, you know, despite all the sins that every character in this book commits, um, there is still a heaven and salvation. The American dream isn't apparent now, but sometime in the future it may become so. Again, you decide which way you want to interpret the novel. Even the clang of the pit shoes even the voices of the men in the game seemed to grow more quiet. The air in the bar barn was dusky in advance of the outside day. A pigeon flew in through the open hay door and circled and flew out again. Uh, so you might see this as symbolic of Curly's wife's soul, or you might not. You might simply see it as uh, more animal imagery, trying to show how we're all um, just as likely to die and our lives are, if you like, just as small and insignificant as animals. Around the last stall came a shepherd bitch, lean and long, with heavy hanging dugs. And you could easily read this as a metaphorical criticism of women. Uh, so uh, women, if you like, are mothers in society. But look how this mother is described. Well, she's a dog, so she's a bitch. Um, her breasts are heavy and hanging, um, heavy and hanging because they're full of milk um, to feed the puppies, but also there is an element of disgust, isn't there, in the way that this is described, um, and the alliteration of the H conveys that disgust as well. Halfway to the packing box where the puppies wore, she, were, she caught the dead scent of Curly's wife and the hair rose along her spine. This again gives us um, a sense of horror at her death, that even animals can sense uh, how wrong it is. But it's also another reminder that Lenny's guilt is no different from an animal's instinct. She whimpered and cringed to the packing box and jumped in amongst the puppies. She does this as though to protect them, and we are reminded of Slim's practical though very callous instincts, to kill many of the puppies earlier in the novel. 
because death is random and final.